Hi, this is Joe Van Cleve, and we're down at the Secret Squirrel headquarters of QLab in Albuquerque. This is a maker space, and I have Ethan Moses here with me. And uh, how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> and we have a pile of laser-cut plywood parts. And what are we doing with that? Um, so this is the new Camerodactyl flat pack 8x10 sliding box camera called the Copycat. <laughs> and why is it called the Copycat? Because it's a copy of your design and, and it uses a copy lens. And that lens, that's the camera right there that you've seen in previous videos. It's right. We're going to be building a, a laser cut modern version, a little bit nicer version of this. And as he said, because I'm using a copy lens, a Xerox machine lens, it's a copy cap, right? Yeah. yeah. And you can build one at home too. <laughs> you. <laughs> um, okay, so we got some parts. That's a lot of parts. How do you get those thin pieces of plywood cut so accurately? Well, you use a laser cutter. Yep, this big device here, this laser cutter, and Ethan earlier today was cutting all the parts for this camera. Basically, I'm setting up the laser cutter, and it's good. Super cool dude, it's got lasers. He's got lasers coming out of his eyeballs. So here is the front of the camera. Um, it's got the outer part for uh, the lens board slide locks. This is the inner part of the front of the camera, which will um, fit all of the sides of the front part of the camera box um, in place. Here are the top pieces. These would go in something like this. And then these will go in like this, uh -huh. creating a gap for the back box yep. to slide through. Yep. And the same for all of these sides. Um, here's the base plate. We've got two of these cut with um, a hexagon for a 3 8 by 16 nut, which is a standard tripod nut. And then this hole. Uh, that's to hold the nut in on the bottom of the camera. If we come over here, we have the camera back. So again, you know, we've got these interlocking, um, yeah. uh, what do you say, jigsaw pieces yeah. uh, for the box that will slide in from the back. These will go into this thing like this. Right. And then we've got <coughs> the cutout for an 8x10 sheet film holder mm -hmm. with its slide lock here and um, some cutouts for uh, straps for the ground glass. Yep. And then this thing will be the ground glass. We've got to peel and grind the acrylic. And it's got a couple acrylic shims to make the flange distance from the front of the, um, the focusing screen until the actual screen, the same as that of an 8x10 film holder. So you can use it with a standard 8x10. And so we're gonna glue these together. We're gonna start and first do the inner box on the front guy, and while that's drying, we'll do the rear box, and while that's drying, we'll paint the outside and inside of the inner box, and then glue the outer box, and then we'll let that dry for a while. We will build the back up onto the rear box uh, focusing screen, and then we will glue the um, base plate to the bottom of the box and then do some sanding and we should be done. All right.
Okay, well, we're making progress. So we have the, the rear box uh, already assembled and glued, and we have the front box assembled and glued. We still have to make the middle box, put it together, and we're going to be working now on getting the rear ground glass frame built and uh, put together. Okay, here's a quick and dirty way to make a ground glass. Normally you would use a piece of glass with um, like a polishing compound or better yet, sandblasting media, a little bit of water, and grind two together in small circles over and over until you have a perfect ground glass. However, we're gonna do it in the quick and dirty way today with just a vibratory palm sander, and here we go. Okay, so the, that's a much better sanded uh, finish and will be a really nice ground glass, not perfect. Not the fanciest way. First you've got this one with the slot up at the top. That slot is for the lock on the film holder. It goes like that. Then the next one you have uh, has uh, these slides on the side here. Um, they align like this. And then there are two identical pieces that come next on top of that. And they go here like this. And then you've got a film back. And so we're gonna just glue those up one by one in order um, and try and keep them nice and straight. Um, and then we will have almost the full rear of the camera. box uh, together. You cleaned out the inner part of the slide by sliding an extra piece of wood in there, which I thought was real clever. Um, that way the, this part of the box will be able to slide nicely into it. Um, so this guy's drying, this guy's drying. This is the um, focusing screen that's still drying. And then this is the base plate and the face plate that will get glued to the main box, but we need to get this 15 or 20 minutes uh, before it's, you know, set enough that we can really work with it. Okay, so um, it's nice to sand down these edges. Joe did this by hand. Um, I'm gonna do these guys on a belt sander uh, just because it's quick, but you can also do it by hand with a sanding block or you know just even a piece of sandpaper. Um, so here we go. You might want to finish these up now just for yeah. smoothness, but now it's all nice and yeah. um, flat right. and straight yep. and it's got rounded corners. Very good. Cool. Looking good. Plasti Dip, it's a uh, black matte rubber spray. I'm just gonna get it in the edges of this thing. I think we did a good enough job at that it is light type, but if there's any like pinhole or anything, this is sort of a viscous spray and it, it turns to black rubber. 
And so I'm just going to line the very corners with it, much like a light seal tape or something like that. Um, but it does a really nice job. So. Okay, that should be sealed. Done by a professional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, we have the baseboard, all the laminations of the baseboard put in place. And clamping them and weighting them down, letting them dry. Okay, not much else to do now. I think when we come back, what are we going to do? We were going to stain this guy, yep. sand this one, sand and this stain one it. Stain. Okay, very good. Welcome to my channel and Joe Van Cleve's channel and now you're on Ethan's channel and now you're on Joe Van Cleve's channel. We're going to do a double video. <laughs> These um, eye screws are standoffs to push the focusing screen down against the camera flange and these elastic straps included in your kit go through the eye holes, down through this hole. So now we're through here and we're going to do the same on the other side. Uh, this is very hard to do one-handed and two-camera. However, let's try for the challenge. I would help, but my hands are greasy with stain. So. <laughs> but plus, I'm entertained by Ethan's struggle. I got it. Not a struggle. Okay. <laughs> so then, I do this. And then this. <laughs> yes. Uh, the master, look at that. Okay, I think I am going to <laughs> turn off the cameras now. <laughs> so here's the rear box. Uh, I think Joe did a real nice job staining and sanding this one. Um, it is much nicer than the one I built. Um, I really like the look of these charred edges. Uh, even the charred and sanded edges. They're laser charred. Yeah, and then also when you put the stain on it, it's a light one. And it just gets really uh, distinct. Anyway, um, here is the end. There's a nut cert way in there. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. But that's under a layer of plywood and in two more. So we've been working on these uh, black and white and color reversal prints directly in camera. Um, I have a bunch of 8x10 projects that I've been working on and they can stretch on forever. They're complicated and I am slow. So, um, the other day Joe brought his 8x10 camera over to my house uh, just so we could shoot some 8x10 color um, positives. And I used it and I thought this was like one of the greatest cameras I had ever used. Not for maybe taking on a trip around your neck or anything like that, but um, super fun to use. He's got like this shutter here, but basically um, Joe, when did you make this thing? Probably five years ago, six years ago. Yeah. yeah, so Joe made this one like totally, you know, by hand with hand tools and actually got pretty complicated in here from uh, the slide out focusing screen that will take a uh, 8x10 film holder um, to slide focusing system. Let's yeah. see if I can take this out and apart. There's the filter holder. Uh, but he's got like felt and flocking and tape in here and it's it's very well made in hand tools. And so I was really into it but I thought that I could make one really poorly made that still worked as well and, and add a few things. Um, and so then I made uh, 
we're calling it. Uh, who, who knows? I made this camera. <laughs> what was your initial idea? Uh, was I, we might call it the Camerodactyl Copycat because it is a copy of Joe Van Cleve's uh, camera with some improvements. And it also uses a copier lens that I have to make him a lens mount for. Um, but so this is the one I made in a few hours just to see if it, everything fit. And it's, uh, it does, it works. I gave Joe the elastic from my focusing screen, so I'll leave it over here. Um, but yeah, basically it just slides in and out to focus. And then you lock it down with a binder clip. Um, takes, this one takes uh, six by six lens boards, but my lens was too big. I had to cut this out with a knife, uh, not so nicely. And so now um, the newest version uh, this is the one Joe and I made today, mostly Joe made today. Uh, has an 8x8 lens board and a giant opening for giant weird lenses, and I'll make him um, a lens holder and mount once he is uh, ready to take his lens out of his other camera and send me some measurements. Um, but yeah, Joe made this one today. Um, he stained it and sanded it and took time for things to dry. I don't know how many hours do you think we spent doing this today? Six hours, maybe? Yeah, <laughs> at least four. Yeah. But um, yeah, it did a really nice job. Uh, the stain is still drying, but um, yeah, it's got this ground glass spring back. Let's see. It just takes normal 8x10 holders that slot in, and then you lock in with a groove. Uh, you can see that groove on this camera with no focusing screen. It's right here. Um, and then also you can turn the back vertically. I'm not gonna do it on Joe's because it's still drying. Mine does it. So you can shoot vertical or horizontal. It has three eighths by 16 standard tripod mount uh, on the bottom. And yeah, I don't know what else to say about it. You can buy them now at cameradactyl.com in a flat pack kit. So um, I'll laser cut everything out for you. Um, I'm making everything out of white uh, white maple veneer ply. And then it's up to you. Do you want to finish one like this, which is poor, or like this, which is beautiful? Um, well, we had a great time today here at QLab getting my uh, the prototype, well, the second uh, prototype of this uh, sliding box camera done. And thanks to Ethan and all his great work that he's done in designing it and laying it out and everything. Hey, thanks, Joe, for yeah. building one. Yeah. So uh, next week, I'm going to be doing a uh, put this camera together, get the lens mounted. I'm going to use that Fujinon Xerox machine lens, and I'm going to uh, give this camera a try out next week. Look forward to that. Well, guys, until next time, have yourselves a great day. Stay creative. Bye-bye for now.